This mini video lecture is going to show you another way of determining epicenter location that won't require you to print out the travel time curve. At this point, you should be familiar with this graph. It shows the time it takes for both the P wave and the S wave to arrive some distance from the epicenter. Traditionally, once the S minus P time is determined from seismograms, one can then go find out where on the graph the difference in arrival times matches that number. So this part of the graph here represents the distance, uh, the difference in the arrival times of the P wave and the S wave. However, Another way of accomplishing the same feat is to actually graph the S minus P time, because if you take the value of the travel time of the S wave, say here, and you subtract the time of the P wave in the same location, then you will have uh, some number. So in this case, it's 10, 20, 30 seconds time difference and 30 seconds would be where that hits on the S minus P curve. And so in this week's activity, instead of using a piece of paper to find this number between the two lines, you're going to just directly look for it on the S minus P curve. Just as one more example, let's say that the travel time difference between your P wave and your S wave was 20 seconds, then we would find 20 seconds on the S minus P curve, which looks like here. And looking down, we would see that that happens at a distance of 200 kilometers, which should agree with the old method. We can go ahead and count it out. So the old method, the S minus P time would have been here. And if we count that, that looks like uh, 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds travel time difference. So the two methods definitely are both going to give you the correct answer, but hopefully using uh, this curve with the online uh, resources will make it easier for you to complete the assigned lab activity. This completes the mini video lecture epicenter location using the SP curve. Hope it helps.